I've never said that Brock Purdy was trash. Mad crazy. Like, you wanted me on your podcast after talking about my quarterback, which is funny to me. Cam, stop calling my phone. Like... <laughs> Well, I got your number. Cam Newton's post. I swear he can't keep his mouth closed for nothing. But I will say a lot of people are a little overly emotional. I mean, there's a lot more. Now we're in this realm of media, right? We're in this realm where everyone can have their own media outlet. All these players having different podcasts, TikToks, Instagram, social media has made it accessible for everyone to have their own thoughts, opinions displayed publicly. And now you have someone very outspoken prior to social media in Cam Newton. Now he's investing more time and money into social media, becoming a more prominent figure in the space. And it's ruffling some feathers. People who may not like Cam, people who may not like his opinions. But I do feel like we are a little bit overly emotional in regards to the opinions that are coming from these players or past players mouths. And it's all speculation. It's all thoughts and opinions. A lot of it is in fact. A lot of it is emotionally derived. And I don't I feel like we should take with a grain of salt. It's not that big of a deal. Although the reason we do these videos is because it's it's engaging. It's controversial. It's uh, it's it's outlandish or whatever. Right. And it gets the views. It gets the clicks. And it continues to drive the sport, whether the players enjoy it or not. It's what drives the sport, whether they like it or know it. This stuff right here is what drives the sport. This is what gets fans invested emotionally into the sport, into players, because now people will defend whatever whatever player Cam Newton is calling out in this video. People will go to defend that player. They will establish an emotional connection going to that person's defense. And that means if you are defending that player, you're probably going to pay to watch that game. You're probably going to invest your time, money and effort into watching that game, being eyeballs for the NFL, giving them the views, giving them the clicks and giving them the money when you purchase tickets and paraphernalia as well of this man's career once he decided to hang it up for good went in a direction that I honestly didn't expect. And now it seems like he is doing it once again. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our I'm surprised he said he didn't expect it because I honestly, I knew Cam was going into the media when he hung up, when he hung it up for retirement. He did the vlogs when he was on the Patriots. He started talking a little bit on, on uh, Instagram reels, things in that nature. I knew he was going to go into media. I can tell. Bro, He's got the personality for it. He's great at it. He's great at it. That's why he's grown the way he has. For the Super Bowl, Prize Picks is blessing us with an easy way to make a hundred bucks. All Patrick Mahomes needs is one passing yard in the Super Bowl for a square to hit, which uh, means uh, he's pretty uh, much a free square. First down uh, download Prize them. So fast five and four recommend you you lose you what's going on everybody at this point if you've been following along with the cam newton saga you would know that he's no stranger to these interesting situations about two years ago a little kid disrespected him at his own camp A lot of people are going to be like, why is Cam even talking to the dude? Like, why is he even responding? And I'd have to agree. The best thing to do for, to a hater, or it depends, if they talking out their neck, then you got to check that. I feel like disrespect should go should go check. But when it comes to just people hating on you, people like talking down on you or like trying to or trying to throw dirt on your name or something in that regard, it's only cuz you up. That's the only reason. It's only cuz you up or you have something that they don't have. You or you've done something that they haven't done that they feel like they can't do. It's envy, it's jealousy, it's hate. It's in the name. Haters hate. It's hate. And I felt like in this moment, he probably should have been a bigger man. Not, he ain't got to respond to the kid, dog. Say, man, I wish you love, dog. I wish you love. I wish you could get. I wish you could have half the career I had. You might be a little petty. Throw that on the bus. You feel me? But I don't feel like you should be responding, especially you a grown man too, dog. You're a grown man. What you responding to this little kid for? Ain't affecting you. And you ain't putting him in his place too. You going back and forth at him. You get a little emotional. You sounds like you feel a, feel a little weight. You feel a little bit a little bit of a weight. 
That's the only reason to go back and forth with somebody is if you feel like something that they said is true and it affects you. Don't tell me this little boy got up under your skin, Cam. Don't tell the little boy got under your skin. Oh, listen, Dan. You're a free agent. Listen, Dan. You're a free agent. You're a free agent. Talk to me. Let me do where Where's your Where's your pop? <laughs> and to Cam Newton's credit, he actually tried to help the little kid out. <laughs> nah, nah, ain't no disrespect. You know, if you want some attention, I'm gonna give you some attention. The right way, bro. The right way. When do y'all play? Play What was y'all record today then? One and two. No, two and two and one. Two and one. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wasn't able to see because y'all was two. Cool. Cameras on me. All right, bro. On me all what time. did he do, man? Does he play? He got speed. He got speed. No, he roommate versus roommate. What state has the most universities? Florida. No. California. Yeah. Dog, oh, all these damn. No one cares. Yeah. Oh. You're going to see. Huh? You're going to see. Nah, you ain't, don't act shy. You nah, bro. Don't <laughs> <You're gonna> act <laughs> shy. I'm sitting right here. Yeah, I'm asking. See. I don't want to see. I couldn't see today. You're going to watch that YouTube. Right now. Bro, you watch YouTube. I know you do. I'm cafeteria in your crotch, man. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't be one dimensional. Like, like you said something to me, then I go, well, I'm really trying to talk to you. I'm not trying to like crack no jokes. I'm just really trying to ask a simple question. Bro. I'm sorry. It's, it's your fault. Why? Hey, what he's spitting on the ground for? See, I'm different. I'm different, man. Oh, I man, I come from a different place. I was raised a little different. You spitting on the ground, looking down, looking up at me, boy. Hey, listen, now, I'm a grown man. Don't do it. Where your pops at? You know what? He was right. Honestly, I'm on Cam's side now. I switched sides of the fence. <laughs> Where's your pops? I need to talk to your papa. You feel me? You feel me? Because you was a disrespectful little munchkin. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Because now, 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 Cam is he, trying to holler at him. See what, see what's popping. See what's good. Give him the floor. You know what I mean? And the spit on the ground. Spit on the ground, looking down, looking up at me. For what? For what? Like, what, what we doing? Everybody's looking, but I'm really just trying to ask a question. Answer. But you never said you what you did. Answer. You said you're going to see. Yo, 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 it's not disrespect. No, I, 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 I get that. I get that. I'm not a man. Right? This is the coach. I'm not a man. Coach, we squashed it. We I was literally, I was I love that. I love that. So you can only imagine my surprise when a similar situation happened last summer with yet another kid who's roasting Cam Newton for having the same amount of rings as him? Yes. No, you yes. met me. Yes. I met you. Wait, tell me about him. Show me a picture. Show me a picture. I got an orgo. How many rings you got? Show me a picture. Nine. Nine. I got a question. Nine. Nine. Oh, oh shit. We got the same amount of those. No, but we don't got the same bank account. Oh! What else? What else? Oh, we. You're famous to be acting like that. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah, that's just, it's not even that he's too famous to act like that. He's too grown. And you would think his grownness would equate to maturity. But a lot of times in our society, we see that's not the case. Because I would like to say he's too grown and too mature, but it's obvious that's not the case. I've never seen this video before. This is a little disappointing because I do like Cam and I like his content too that he puts out on his on his channel. And I didn't know he was that immature as a grown man. Because this is quite immature. Whether he's he's joning, he's roasting, he's boasting or joking, it's immature. Grown man. MVP of the league, you got M's in the bank account, and you're talking to kids. You're talking to real, you're talking to kids. Kids, my guy. Kids. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And it seems to be a narrative when they speak about his rings or his accomplishments that he decides to come back at these children, right? 
it sounds like you feel some kind of way about the things you did not achieve in the league. And you might need to do some soul searching, some healing. Because it's affecting you dramatically in public, obviously. Because if you didn't believe it and you knew what you did, and you were confident in what you did, and you were okay with yourself and what you saw in the mirror, I, don't, I really think he'd handle this differently. I would like to believe a mature adult would handle this a lot differently, especially if they've already been okay. Like whatever they're saying, they're okay with their self. Becoming okay with yourself, love thyself. Okay, no regrets, having no, having no past animosity towards what you did not accomplish so far in your life or during your career as an NFL quarterback. Being at peace with that. I feel like those things would lead to a much different response than what we're getting in this video right now, which is nothing short but, uh, but of immature. No, 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 don't play the victim now. And brother Cam Newton, I love you. I love watching you play, but making that gesture in front of a little kid is obscene. I mean, this is just yeah. a crazy thing to do in front of a kid. But I have a lot of respect for Cam Newton. He brought swagger and excitement to the NFL during the 2010s. He gave the Carolina Panthers the most false hope they've had since the Jake DeLome era. The and at the very end crazy. of it, he had a very entertaining career, both on the field. <laughs> Straight back, throws a crossing route, McCaffrey, touchdown. That's Even during pregame moments, like this altercation that he had with Calvin Benjamin, who for some reason decided to throw Cam Newton under the bus, but was too scared to confront him in person. At the end of the day, I have to admit, Cam Newton was one of the most entertaining personalities in NFL history and one of my favorite players in the 2010s. But ever since he started his podcast, this man seems to be doing anything he possibly can to trend and be controversial. The first instance of this was when he talked about how he quite literally Literally. I don't think he doing stuff for clout. I just think he's outspoken, a very opinionated person, and it's being taken the wrong way. I don't know if he out he here doing Jimmy stuff Clausen. For clout. Now, if you don't know who Jimmy Clausen is, he's most notorious for Mel Kiper saying this about him. And I'm gonna make it my life's mission to remind you each and every day that Mel Kiper said this about Jimmy Clausen, and he still hasn't retired yet. But Cam Newton discussed how Jimmy Clausen wanted one million dollars so Cam could wear number two, the same jersey he wore at Auburn. And I guess it's safe to say that Cam Newton got the last laugh. I don't even want number one, man. Jimmy Clausen, we cool now. Let's go! Put your hands together! Jimbo, I was like, only you gotta pay for it. I was like, cool, how much? He said, a million. I said, boy, kiss my Well, I said, a million dollars, bro? I said, bro, people don't make a million dollars in a lifetime, let alone, I'm gonna give you a million dollars just for number, bro. So I thought he was playing. The motherfucker! Was back and said, "Okay, bro. I talked to my people. We'll do it for seven hundred and fifty thousand." I said, "Oh, oh, you for real?" <laughs> sir. Hung that phone up. I called the equipment man. I said, "I'm rocking with number one." I made an oath to myself. I said, "That will be the last time Jimmy Clausen will ever be heard of." in Carolina. But the main reason Cam Newton has been trending recently is his recent beef with the San Francisco 49ers. That took a very hilarious turn, by the way. If you guys remember, a little over a month ago, Cam Newton said this on his podcast. Lamar Jackson, obviously Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Brack Parody, like, but Brock, let's, they're not winning because of him. He's not turning the ball over. He's managing the... This is just his thoughts and opinion. It's not like he's attacking Brock Purdy and saying, Brock Purdy is trash. Brock Purdy is inefficient. He's inaccurate or blah, blah, blah. He's just saying from his analysis as an NFL quarterback, as an MVP, he's an analyzing the game and saying they're not winning just because of Brock Curley or because of Brock Purdy. It's not like Lamar Jackson where they're winning because of Lamar Jackson or losing because of Lamar Jackson. There, he's saying that there's so many other pieces in that puzzle. There's so much going on around. And Brock Purdy, at this point in his career, isn't that guy that's taking them over the edge or under the edge necessarily due to his play. It's not like Patrick Mahomes where 
what he does is the like his efficiency and how he performs is the exact outcome of the game, whether they win or lose, right? It's all dictated on Patrick Mahomes. Brock Purdy is not that type of player yet, yet. And that's just his analysis. I've watched a lot of those clips. That's what he's saying. He's not attacking Brock. He's just saying he, they, he's managing the game, not making a lot of mistakes, which, mind you, is what they said about Tom Brady a lot in his career, regardless of how many Super Bowls he had. It's like he's a great game manager. Doesn't make mistakes. And he'll eat you alive if you make mistakes. Game management, right? Why is it so negative coming out of Cam's mouth? And I strongly believe it's because of the negative connotation that surrounds his name already. And that's because of his immaturity off the field and his emotional attitude and his very grandioso, uh, you know, vibrant aesthetic or whatever and outspokenness, you know, and, uh, you know, the gestures and things like that. I think it's because of the judgment we let, we, we've placed upon him before words even come out his mouth. Judgment is... Pre, pre, ju pre judging him before anything comes out of his mouth. Now, whatever comes out of his mouth is taken and bent and folded and scolded. And now you have things like this, things like this, where we have a whole piece about how this is negative and he's bashing a quarterback when he's not. He's just analyzing the game from his perspective. And he definitely has a valid perspective being he has an MVP and he was he did go to a Super Bowl and he was an NFL quarterback. I feel like his opinion is validated in that fact. The game. And if we were to put that in its own right as game managers, Brock, Parody, Tua Tonga Valoa, Jared Goff, and really, Dak Prescott. Mm. Now, a lot of people had some reservations with this. Coming out and calling some of the best QBs in the NFL game managers like Dak Prescott, Tua Tagovailoa, and Jared Goff, saying that they're game managers, not difference makers. And with all due respect, there some of difference. these QBs have done more than Cam has in the prime of his career. There is no a difference between Cam, game I just management think it's wild and game to say changers. This about a quarterback that has made it to two back-to-back -back NFC championships after being named Mr. Irrelevant, one of the most prolific quarterbacks quarterbacks of this season in Dak Prescott and Tua and another quarterback that made it to the NFC Championship and would have won if it wasn't for, well, pressure, escape, fires over the middle and it is incomplete. And I'm not in the business of disrespecting QBs. I feel like at the end of the day, a quarterback is a product of the system he's in, the weapons around him, and his ability to make the most of his situation. And sometimes you find perfect fits like Patrick Mahomes. You see, but there's some times where you find quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes that, I mean, perfect fit, sure, but he becomes the fit. And then you just fit around him. That's a game changer. And we do need to recognize the difference because we cannot put everyone as a game changer. If everyone was a game changer, there would be no winners and losers. He's a game changer. There is a difference. Whether you agree with Cam or not, at least recognize the difference. Kansas City Chiefs, Bill Belichick, and Tom Brady. Sometimes you find, well, whatever the hell this was. Now, since this moment happened, there was a really funny mini beef between Debo Samuel and Cam Newton, where Debo called out Cam Newton on Kay Adams' show, Up and Adams, saying, stop texting my phone, bro. First of all, Cam Newton, stop texting my phone, bro. He was a fan like two weeks ago. Like, that's mad crazy. Like, you wanted me on your podcast after talking about my quarterback, which is funny to me. And this actually took a really <laughs> funny turn. Turn. I love Devo Samuel's energy, dog. I love him as a player, honestly. Black Air Force Ones. That's what he remind me of. A pair of Black His Air Cam Force Ones. response was a little confusing. You must stop the cap, bro. I <laughs> like... Now, my point is this. You said something like, Cam, stop calling my phone. I'm like... <laughs> I don't got your number. And then it was revealed at the very end of it that <laughs> Tebow was getting punked by some kids. And if you look at these texts, it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Come on the pod in the next few oh, weeks. No. Look at these texts. It's <laughs> that <laughs> a pretty wild sort of event. Uh, there you go, Cam. It's Cam. And trying to. They trying to hot hey, I don't know who this is. Kill Newton Killer. Fuck you, Debo. Good game tonight, bro. What in the world? 
Tebow was getting punked by some kids. And if you look at these texts, it's absolutely hilarious. Come on the pod in the next. Yo, Debo, it's Cam. I'm trying to have you on the pod in the next few weeks. Hit me back, Ace Bookie. Who this? It's Cam. You trying to hop on? I don't know who this is. Cam Newton, killer. Fuck you, Debo. Uh, good game. Y'all look good. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dog. I'm sorry. You should know this is not Cam. I know this is how he be like. See, the kid is kind of smart, though. He doing a little asterisk stuff that Cam be doing on his Instagram and whatnot. Well, I feel like as a grown man, ain't no way he talking about like Cam Newton killer. Fuck you, Debo. Ain't no way you try and hop on. Like, I feel like a grown man probably texts you in like complete sentences with some with at least decent grammar. Right. Decent. Am I man? Maybe I'm out of I'm out of touch. Maybe I'm out of touch. Maybe this is how people really text. We really be texting like this. I don't know. Next few weeks, hit me back, Ace Boogie, and they're I'm only 24, like so like Cam Newton, the only human I being like in the world that would type out like this is Cam Newton, and he's known for doing this crap. He's like, I don't know who this is, and he goes, Cam Newton killer, and then he responds. Well, I don't have a lot of Debo, people. That text my actually like responding that. to this the whole time. At the very end, you can see a group chat of people like laughing at the fact that they got away with this, and there was a specific point where they even got Debo Samuel on the phone. Yeah, probably it's been a minute. I was hoping to uh, connect with you. Bro, I mean, we got some boys that look out to you, look up to you, you know what I mean? What's going on? Nothing, bro. I mean, I was just hoping to talk. I mean, I don't know if you're busy right now, but I mean, I was just honestly calling to, uh, you know, whatever you got for the. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> And once all that beef was squashed and there was a realization that Debo got punked by a bunch of kids and the smoke settled and cleared, well. Internet games. Internet games, internet games. Well, Cam Newton returned. This time, uh, doing what Cam Newton does best, doubling down on his original take. I've never said that Brock Purdy was trash. Thank what you. What I did say is Brock Purdy is a game manager. What's wrong with that's that? That's not hate. That's, that's not what I feel to be facts. Thank you. But I still reserve the right to say this, to be labeled a game changer. Everything changes the come moment on, you step on, on board. On, come on. You can stay on track, indulge in as right there. Brock Purdy has to be the best player on the offensive side of the ball. Mm. And that's not the case. And who's the best player? T Christian McCaffrey. Christian. Yeah. Hmm. Man, look, I ain't recanting shit. No. And if you really want to just be honest, if you add in the defensive talent and you add in the offensive talent, Brock Purdy is the 10th best player on this team. Okay. Who's best? Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Fred Warner, Chase Williams, Trent. George Kettle. I think he's the seventh player, best player on his team. He might be the seventh best player on his team. Oh, Bosa. Damn. Okay. He might be the eighth best player on his team. <laughs> oh, man. You made a good point. Hey, cool. Did he have a great game? Yes. Is he been playing out of his mind? Yes. Is he a quarterback that's hot? Yes. yes. But he's still the 10th best player on his team. So, in Cam Newton's defense, he never said Brock Purdy is trash. What he did say was that Brock Purdy is a game manager, and he's not recanting anything. In Brock Purdy's defense, I honestly don't understand how you could say this man's a game manager. I mean, the man quite literally threw a football off of the face mask of a defender straight into Brandon Ayuk's hands. If that isn't true... Hey, listen, microphone, this might be my first and last time watching you, playboy. He did not do that on purpose. It was a bad throw that God, God decided to give him a, give him a, give, give, give let, let, let it slide. God decided I'm going to let it slide. And I'm just going to give it to your boy Ayuk and we're going to keep rolling. But don't you throw no dumb shit like that again, boy. Don't you do no dumb stuff like that again, boy. That was not a good throw. We're not going to say he intentionally threw it off his, Mike, Mike, don't do it. Don't do it. I come through this camera, boy. I come through this camera. He did not intentionally throw that off that boy's face mask. He did not intentionally throw that off his face mask. 
<laughs> that's the dumb. Hey, hey. Now I know why your channel so popular. You just be saying dumb shit like that, huh? All the time, probably. And people just be hee hee ha ha, letting it slide. Boy, I tell you what. I hope that was just in your script for like retention purposes. Audience retention. Just say some dumb shit and then it'll make everybody be like, oh, oh wait, what, what did he just say? Yeah, I hope so. I hope you don't believe he really threw that off that man face mask on purpose, boy. That crazy. Truly the next coming of Tom Brady, then I don't know what is. But I'm trying to figure huh? out whether huh? truly the next the face mask of a defender straight into Brandon Ayuk's hands. If that isn't truly the next coming of Tom Brady, then I Oh yeah, I know what yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You a troll. You're a troll. You're a sophisticated troll. That's what you are. A sophisticated troll because you didn't laugh, you didn't plunder or stutter. You actually said it and sounded like you meant it. You're a troll. You're a troll. Now I know why you have so many subscribers because people are probably hating on that in the comments. If we go into the comments, right, I guarantee there's some comments in there about talking about he's the next time Brady, blah, blah, blah. You're just getting a rise out of people. You're a little troll, huh? But you also have some facts and data and things in the background that help make it up. Okay, I see what's happening, microphone. I see what's happening. I don't know what is. But I'm trying to figure out whether or Tom not Brady. what Cam Newton is saying is legitimate. Tom because Brady. you could make a solid argument. I mean, I think the best overall player on the San Francisco 49ers, there's no question about it, is none other than Nick Bosa. And then I'm not going to go ahead and rank players over each other because that's just silly. At the end of the day, all the San Francisco 49ers are very impactful. So, like, I can't sit here and say Fred Warner is better than Trent Williams. The argument he's making is Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, Trent Williams, Brandon Ayuk. This is good. You're really good at this YouTube shit, boy. You're really good at this YouTube stuff. There's no way you believe Bosa's better than Christian McCaffrey. More important to that team than Christian McCaffrey. There's no... You see, and it's making me feel some kind of... You're really good at this. You're really good because no one expected you to say that. You must have scripted your YouTube videos. This is not off the cuff. This is purposeful. This is planned. Attention to detail. I respect you, actually, for the way you've crafted this video. I really do respect it. This, wow, uh, honestly, there's no way you believe that. No, no way you believe that. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Dre Greenlaw are all better than Brock Purdy. And I guess after that, it's kind of difficult to really, I can't, I guess you could make an argument that he's the ninth best player, right? But I don't know if you could say he's the 10th best player. At the very end of the day, I have a friend that's a very insufferable San Francisco 49ers fan. I mean, like, I really can't stand this human being. He drives me insane and he's the sole reason I want the San Francisco 49ers to fail. It has nothing to do with the fact that they've bounced out my Dallas Cowboys Cowboys two years in a row in the most embarrassing fashion ever. It has to do with the fact that this man always consistently rubs it in my face. But if there's one thing that I've noticed towards his entirety as a San Francisco 49ers fan is that the one thing the 49ers have always been struggling to find throughout the Shanahan era alone is a quarterback. Yeah, I'm over this video, but other than that, I mean, listen, he called him a game manager and he stood on business and he didn't recant his statement. And honestly, I kind of have to agree at this point. Until he does something spectacular on a consistent basis, I'm not going to call him a game changer. You know what I mean? Until we have to rely on him and him only to change the outcome of a game, I'm not going to call him a game changer. You know what I mean? It's not a knock. It's not hate. It's just an opinion, which is what drives the sports. Other people's opinions. Talking about the game. But Mike, Mike, you good, boy. You good, boy. I tell you what, you good.